All right, welcome everyone. This is a Viper Professional Training and Sport webinar. Uh, today's date is April 17th, 2017. This is a Monday night webinar, and the title of tonight's webinar is Are You a Conservative or Aggressive Trader? And as everyone knows that's been to our webinars or our live trading room, everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, Forex trading, any kind of financial instruments trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar. Other webinars we might have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems, should never be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? All right, if not, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, real quick, um, everybody, if you wouldn't mind, uh, type in an, an A or a C, whether you're an aggressive or a conservative trader, or even AC if you happen to be both. AC, uh, both, both, okay. I see conservative quite a bit. I see both more than conservative. Um, let's see, lots of them coming in. AC quite a bit, good. Well, you know, that's what I think is, is a good mix because if you think about it, if you do two different types of trades, you also have to have in mind that you've got to do two different types of stops, targets, and things like that. You know, because if you're going to be an aggressive trader, like, like a lot of our traders happen to be, you know, you're, you're still you're going to have to actually get in the trade. You're going to have to, you know, do it based on what you've learned and things like that, and then you take your profit fairly quickly. Actually more conservative now that I can't uh, take market orders as quickly. That will be changing uh, on your question there, uh, David, not a, not a problem on that. I realize that on your particular version. If mine didn't have that little error in it that, is going to be fixed in the next one. Plus, he's adding those three other trades. I would actually just redistribute it because I think that market order is worth its weight in gold. And uh, I'll assure you, I'm going to be on him so much this week. He will get me done. This is taking way too long. Uh, let's see. I want to get my auto bar close going. Well, you can do that. Uh, Michael, on your question, you can do auto bar closes if you want. I'll show you how to do that um, if, if you want to. Now, the way to do that, I wouldn't recommend like starting out with a bunch of contracts and then adding a bunch more. I'd probably, you know, start out with like two and then change it to one and then just add on a bar close, something like that. And then when you see some cash add up in your little register there, uh, click some of them out. Okay. Now, you should be able to see a screen coming up anyway. It's paused right now but you should be able to see it coming up. All right, now let's go ahead and see where we're at, because I don't know exactly where we're at, but let's draw it and see. Okay, this is where we're at on this particular chart right now. Now I'm looking at a gold chart literally at the beginning of the night, because I don't get up until about seven o'clock to trade. Oh, I hope my sound's not breaking up. It may be more my voice actually because I do have a pretty bad cold. Ho hopefully it's just that. It's good, okay. Um, but when, when you look at a chart like this, you know, y you can obviously see on the power meters and everything, we've got pretty much of a downtrend right now, right? But if you're an aggressive trader and you're looking for like a power meter type trade, you know, what if this thing turns green and you want to take it, maybe, maybe mid band's right here. I don't know where it's at, but let's just say it's right in here. Well, what if you could get a quick five or ten ticks? That, that's what an aggressive trade would be. A, a trader that really wouldn't care if the background was red, green, or you know, purple for that matter. They're, they're really just trading the swings themselves. And if you do that, you've got to get you know, in and out fairly quickly because you're going to want to scalp it. Let's see if I've got... Uh, Questions coming in. 
uh, still learning, so sometimes I miss the enter spot and have to also jump in. Um, the one thing about uh, jumping in is if you jump in late, you know, you've got to be careful because let's say, for instance, that this was to, you know, do this, come down a little bit, and then pop up and take out like a little swing. You pretty much got to just be in it. You know, you can't hesitate. And uh, to do that, you know, you you have to also you know, have in mind, you know, where your target's going to be and things like that. What I like to do on my charts, as everybody knows, is draw on them. You know, you want to draw these main pivot points mostly for sure, okay, because these are these are pretty much the important ones that they're going to hit their heads at and things like that, okay, and uh, if you do that, then obviously on your chart you're going to be able to see you know, like, for instance, if I broke here, would I at least go to here or maybe even here? You see what I mean? Now, when you think about doing something like this, always remember, they don't necessarily come right to this line. Charles has showed this a lot of times in his webinars, too. These are areas. And an area, let's see, I'm going to put this in, like, gold, I guess. Where's gold? There's gold. Since we're tr showing gold chart, we'll put it in gold. All right, so basically you'd be looking, you know, for instance, is that resistance? Would this roll over at resistance? Well, more than likely it would, wouldn't it? Because that's what they do. They check it continually. They check it and they check it and they check it. And these are important to look to the left to trade the right. So I like to draw lines on my chart just like we do in the room. All right, I'm going to leave that box right there. Okay, and then I'm going to draw... Uh, like you want to just draw like a little trend line seems like it's trying to break that trend line doesn't it so you know if that goes to like a green meter that would be an aggressive trade but we could sure give it a shot you want to try it now we've already diagnosed our chart so we know where support and resistance is and everything now I'm gonna to have to draw it on my actual trading chart though or simply change this chart to my trading chart, like that. Okay, notice how that box is drawn right there. See there? Isn't that amazing? That's right near Phantom also. And looking to the left to trade the right, that's, that's pretty good. Matter of fact, now that I see this, I'd probably draw it like this now, something like that. Because that's where, in this little area right here, on even a deeper pullback, I would be looking for a trade to be setting up in this area right in through here, just like that box is drawn, just like that's a predictor. Okay, let's go ahead and take this off. Now, let's go ahead and uh, do, well, we'll get this out of the way because I've got two other charts over here with Object Trader. All right, now you know that you have a feature on your, your new Object Trader called PM. 1 and PM2, okay? Now, looking at this chart, this could be, you know, a fairly dangerous trade, couldn't it? Because look at this thing. It's dropped, you know, a bunch. But what do we talk about lightning all the time? You know, when you have thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. If it breaks lightning back to the upside, might it give us five or ten ticks? And a lot of our traders do these type of trades, too. I'll, I'll show you. We'll, we'll see if uh, it actually works. I'm going to do like three since it's gold. And since we're not really wanting to uh, go for a long shot or anything like that, I'd probably just go for like more of a scalp. Okay, something like that. Okay, and let's see here. A conservative trade we could do on this chart here. We'll do our region. We had said that our line was going to be right there, right? So I'm going to set up a region like so. And I'm going to go ahead and do like touch plus like two. And we'll do three on it. Now this is a little bit more conservative trade because I'm actually looking for a rollover here. Okay. But that's resistance right there. Okay, so 
on this chart I'm looking for that. Now let's do one more chart because what I want to do is I want to do a trend line type trade if I can get one that is. Okay now it's too late to do a trend line now because we, we're going to have to have at least even with these big object trader Ranko bars we're going to have to have at least three or four maybe even five bars to where we can draw a trend line. Okay so let's see well, we'll wait for it. If it if it does this trade here, uh, and for sure if it does this one, it's gonna it's gonna be that many. So we'll we'll watch it and see. But right now, we just got to draw a trend line. We could also draw a trend line right now, like this, because this is still a short so far, right? But this is already thrust down, so we're waiting for a little retrace. Okay. Now let me take this off because I need to actually put this in wedge first my little line and we'll do yeah we'll go ahead and do a close above and let's see we want to do like three and since we're going against the trend we're going to do a scalp again all right, and let's see what we get. Now, this is fairly pretty much the same trade. Now, this one over here, we're going to do the PM. And with the PM, you have to always turn this back on, okay? And I'm not going to do a PM short until we get a retracement because they've already thrust. Okay, so let's see if we can get something. This is kind of like the trades we see every day, isn't it? Let's see if we get something. <clears throat> now every, everybody else is getting the sound good right everybody else is okay is that what you mean when you say in the room always look to the left that's exactly right James on your question I know you uh, you've been with us before but you're taking a trial now um, we've advanced quite a bit over the years if, if you haven't been with us in a while I think you'll be pretty amazed at what we have to offer uh, but also uh, the fact that we've got the tools to trade plus the uh, knowledge, the live trading room and all that. Okay, so let's see. We've got a conservative trade setting up over here. Now, I could do another conservative trade here, obviously, and that would be to uh, wait for a retrace and roll over, right? So we could see if we can get one of those too. All right, let's see if we get anything here. I don't want to run this over like 10 or 15 times because you can get those quick jumps and then it messes up uh, OT. Let's see if we get something. Sounds very good. It's just my voice. Now my voice is a little on the squirrely side. It'll get better. Been taking vitamin C and the the wellness formula and all that stuff all right there we go okay notice that PM meter just went green okay oh now it went red I'm not sure why it did that oh it's probably because uh, this had just started the uh, you know when you start market replay you won't usually run into this in your real-time trading but unfortunately we're gonna run into it on this Yo, oh, I feel great it's just strictly uh, the you know, just the cold, just that nastiness that you get with a cold. Okay, let's see here. We haven't gotten this trade just yet, notice, because it hadn't closed the bar yet. Now, when you're going to use bigger bars, I'd highly recommend, this is a little bit more of a conservative trade, and I'd highly recommend going with the little bit larger bars because it, it will actually be, you know a, a better deal for you okay so I'm gonna let this go ahead and fire if it breaks that trend line it's an eight uh, object trader you could use an eight range if you wanted to that that's an actually a Ranko bar James so it's gonna be a little bit larger than eight on a uh, rollover bar but the rollover bar already happened which was this bar right here that went up so this next bar should only be about four or five ticks unless it does a big wick to check the bottom of it and that could happen okay now notice we're losing a little bit not much we're right at break even 
Okay. Now, what I'm going to show you, like I said, is a little bit more aggressive way and even conservative way to trade these. Because I don't care if this goes to the moon. I just want to scalp it here for 5 and 10 ticks. Three contracts would be 10 and 10. That would be $200. Okay. If we get it. Now, we may not get it. You know, nobody knows as far as that goes. Um, I'll show you before the, the webinar's out uh, how to use that uh, bar close feature if you want. Uh, and I'd highly recommend doing it on a little bit larger bar also. You don't want to just go add in four range bars. Uh, the reason you can't see the P&L on the chart, Mindy, is because this chart's in the way. Okay, notice we did get our profit on this one. Look at that. And we got this one. Okay, let's see what we got. We got 400 total P&L. Okay, now with this new trader that we've got coming, see that one, two, three, four? That's the fourth bar. What if we get a fifth bar? Could we actually be ready to take that if it gets a fifth bar and closes down? Let's see, I want short outside on this one, and I want short inside on that one, just in case I want it to trigger. Okay, and we'll put that back. Okay. Now, does this mean that you couldn't go ahead and also box in like we do around mid-band? Absolutely. You want to do a little region? We'll do a little region and do a long, if it breaks above that box, close of the bar and see if we can get something on that. Uh, we'll stretch it, though, and we'll short it if it takes out just like we box in, right? We just want to box it in. So we're going to go short, outside, close, and long, outside, long for a scalp again. Because if we go short, you know, we're going with the trend, right? But we could always move our targets. But if we're going long against a red background, we probably just want to scalp it. Let's see if we get anything here. We've got this thing going about 15 times as fast as I really want to do it. Short O and I means it will go short with a bar close in or out of the ray. Uh, Dan, on your question, the way this actually means here, let's just go ahead and put this up. If I run this ray like this, for instance, okay, and that bar closes below that line, it would fire a short, okay? Now, when you use the bottom line, that means the price is above the line. When you use the top, uh, button here, the price is below the line. So in other words, if I had another line up here, but I use this a lot of times just so that in case it just kind of pops it, it kind of takes advantage of both directions. Okay, because for instance, see if this actually closes below here, we would get a trade. Okay, we'll see if it actually fires. I don't know if it does or not. If it does, then we'll be in a trade. Now, usually when I see like a wick forming like that, I go ahead and reposition my ray. You know, because we don't want it to fire unless the bar actually closes, right? Because what if this thing just goes to the moon? There's resistance on this bigger chart. See right there? That's resistance. Looking to the left to trade the right. So let's see if we get something on that one. Did we get something on this one? Not yet. Not yet. We still haven't gotten anything on this one yet either. Let's see, question uh, is, uh, is logic Renko bars and object trader Renko bars uh, have the same reversal point? You know, I don't think they're exact, Dennis, because uh, logic's actually their own little bars. Um, I know the guy really well, you know, uh, personally even, but the one thing that I don't, and I've even told him about this, that I don't like about his bars is that when it rolls over, you, you see a long bar forming, but then you see like three bars, you know, uh, that kind of appear. But it'll still fire with a closed bar, though. It's just when you look at it in historical, though, it's a little bit harder to tell. 
where, like our Renko bar, to give an example, you know, right here, I mean, that bar still has not closed just yet, right? And if it closes below that line, it would fire that trade. Okay? Now, we don't know how high it's going to go, but one thing you can do to keep out of some of these uh, fake outs on four range bars, you can use these trend lines. They, they work pretty well. Matter of fact, when we get this new one to people, you could clearly see that you could probably have even gotten in this trade. You know, you might have, I don't think you would have gotten stopped out. You might have on that one uh, because, you know, for instance, that's all bars down, that's all bars down. It would have fired long on that bar there. So that would have been about a 20 tick stop. So that would have probably not worked. But then usually what I do is reposition it when I see this happen and we did get that trade. Let's see. Okay, so we've got a little aggressive trade going right here. Now, by the way, you can change this in real time when you get this new one. So I can do that with it now. Okay? Because remember how, you know, a lot of times in the room, you know, I'll, I'll ask Charles, I'll say, you want the type box or include the wick or whatever? And then, of course, as it, as it starts consolidating a little bit, you want to, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, tighten it up. Now, the only thing about a trade like this, see how this closed right at the top of that box? It's not going to fire that trade tool right there. I don't like that trade as much simply because it's it's like a little breakout trade. See there? Okay. We'll go ahead and take it. I mean, we took it, so let's just go ahead and take it. Um, but since it fired so late, I'm going to actually put it right under here under it, predictor and a tight stop on it because I would have rather had that trade right above that line, just like even two ticks would have been fine with me. Notice how that fired, by the way. See how we got that trade? Now, do we want that trade? Well, let's, let's find out. We went ahead and diagnosed our chart, so let's see if it works. Now, since this is actually with the trend, we'll probably go ahead. By the way, you could even do that and add if you wanted to. See where that little box is right there? See, I just added. And I could put my stop just right above the swing. And and what I did there is just simply, you know, added when it broke the little little consolidation like uh, lightning. Well, we got our trade over here. We got our trade. We haven't got our trade here yet on our trend line, probably because we didn't redraw it, because if we would have redrawn it, we would have gotten it on that bar. That's one thing I think I'm going to like about the new one, is because the way the program is going to design this is it's going to uh, basically hug these bars, not the wicks. I'll show you how the line would have drawn. And this is the way it'll draw in real time, too. So it would have fired already on that bar. See there? And let me get it a little bit more with the bodies. See where it goes just along the right corner of the right side of the bottom of the bar? That bar would fire it right there. Now, since we uh, didn't catch that one, we would obviously just turn on bar close now. And let's go ahead and take it anyway. Because it's the same thing. If it breaks it, right, it's still breaking the trend line. Okay, so we'll take that if it does. Let's see, this one, we're, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way for a second. We're feeling a little bit of heat on that one. We've got five contracts on. Our stop's just above the resistance. Resistance is right here, so I'd probably put it exit on close above that. Because it could go up there and kiss that. It hadn't checked it. And but usually most times if they check it they'll 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 miss it just a little bit and then they'll pop it down. Do you prefer those bars over candles? I like those uh James on your question. 
there there are bars you know that we've had for a number of years I've learned to be able to see them you know whether they're they're long or short uh, as far as the bar itself you know whether it uh, closed up or down we got some nice little trade going so far now what do we want to do with this one here this one let's see here You've got a swing right across here. See it? High, low, lower, high. I'm going to go ahead and take that short if it takes that little swing out right there. See it? High, low, lower, high, lower, low. Let's give it a try. And we'll do a... Yeah, we'll let it close inside it. Everybody see why I'm doing that? If you draw your lightning, you can see a high, a low, a lower high, and a lower low. So that means that they're trying to head down. Power meter's same, but we are. Okay? So if it breaks that right there, I could go ahead and take this little trade. Now, they're just playing sideways right now, so let's see what they actually end up doing. You know, stay with your trade, though, because we haven't gotten any profit targets yet. Now, I wouldn't go add into that five, by the way. Can you also move the box with the new one? Yes. Isn't that beautiful, Dan? For instance, if I wanted just to do this while it's on the chart like that and then go short outside that with a touch plus two or a close even, it should fire it. See there? And if I wanted to, I could move it again and take another set. You see what I mean? Like if it breaks that swing right there, if I wanted to. Watch it check to six if it breaks that. That's going to be a really powerful feature on that. Let's see, do you do you prefer the range no gap bars uh, or the object trader Renko bars? They both smooth out the price. Well, the, the range no gap bars don't really smooth out the price that much. You know, they're they're actually just more you know, to do away with those gaps that you get on a normal four range bar. Okay. Now, what about you conservative traders? What do you think? We, we got us a great trade. Our, us aggressive traders got us a great trade. You know, we've got six contracts over here. I would probably uh, bring this, say, right through here. And if this was to pop up, I'd probably reverse it, so I'm going to put reverse if it happens to take out that swing. It's not doing it, though. We're going to go ahead and get rid of some contracts, though. Right there at the low. That's good. And then our we went to break even on our uh, trade there. Now, okay, always be looking at your charts. Where is another great trade setting up on this chart as we speak? Anyone? Mid-band, right? Sure, a mid-band type trade. Now let's see if we can look to the left to trade the right and see if we can get this trade. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this little conservative one run, okay, because we've only got three. And by the way, if you have three left and it, and it retraces like that, you can always take two of them off. You know, but since we're doing two charts, we won't do that. But now here's a predictor trade. Look to the left to trade the right. And let's see. That's kind of sloppy over there, but that is a, a, a priori swing. So let's go ahead and take that predictor trade. And we see that predictor trade there. Now that was probably a little early, but that's an aggressive trade. Now the conservative trader let's say that you weren't in anything just yet like over here let's look and see if we can get a conservative trade instead uh, I'm going to look at my swings there's one right there there's one right there looking to the left to trade the right that's probably the one they're going to hit so I'll draw two lines I'll draw a little box or couldn't we just take the trade if it that's turned off, so let's go ahead and position our box. Let's see, I'm going to go like this and like that, and we're going to turn on both those, because if it bips up really quick, 
it may get the top one instead and we'll get a little bit better fill. So that's short inside at the top and we're going to do a touch plus two. Okay? This is, this is definitely a beautiful way to trade is looking to the left to trade the right. And whether you're an aggressive trader or a box-in trader, you know, you like to box in at the opens, things like that. If you're a little more conservative, you want to wait for, you know, a little confirmation. But if you wait for confirmation, you, you, you've you got to almost uh, just go for these little bitty targets. Because, like, to give an example, these predictors are pretty accurate. So, you know, let's let's just see where it hits its head. We've already added some trades there. We haven't gotten in this one yet. There's our mid man. You could also throw a fib on it real quick. Yeah, fifty percent is right there at uh, twelve ninety twenty, and uh, thirty eight percent is at uh, twelve eighty nine sixty. That's right where that uh, predictor is. So looking to the left to trade the right, though, I see resistance right there at that swing. See the thrust, retrace thrust, and that one. So that's the two. So I've drawn the box right. Let's see if we get it. Now, probably with this kind of retracement, we should have gotten out of a few of these contracts. But you want to see more where the conservative trader would trade this next trade? I'll just turn this trade off because, you know, we're actually trading literally the same chart. So just trying to show the difference in the type of trades. All right, let's see. That's four range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to go green if it will. Go to PM. Short. And only if that turns green will that ever fire. And if that breaks that little swing, it'll turn green. Maybe. It's got to close. And by the way, also a nice trend line would be in the works for this too, wouldn't it? Could you do a trend line trade? There you go. We just got that one. Let's see here. Let's do our trend line. One, two, three. Draw along those lows of the bars themselves. Like so. And I don't know if that will fire or not because I drew the wedge afterwards. We'll find out. Okay, we, we got that one fired. Came right where I thought it would, but it may go a little higher. We don't know. But we got our stop in, so we're good. You know, I like these little trend line trades, by the way. I think they turn into some really good trades, especially if you're willing to scalp them. Pretty slow at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Let's speed it up a little bit. It's one thing nice about market replay. Let's go in a little higher. Notice, notice how the, the Ranko bar has not flipped. See here? The Ranko bar is still heading up so far. Let's see, let's see what it does. Hopefully don't don't get a trend change. Yeah, we got in anyway, didn't we? Now now the only thing about that type of trade is where's our target on this? Well I'd probably that five and ten should be enough for it, I think. Did we get flattened on this one yet? Let me see. Yeah, we flattened because we only went for those small targets like that, right? Okay. Okay, now we did not take out the low. Uh, I left the PM on. That probably wasn't a very good idea. We'll see if it takes it down a little bit. We'll, we'll trust it.
Uh, Diane, on your question, I like them both, actually. Uh, most of our people don't have those, so I didn't, I didn't put them on tonight. But we can still get that discount for anybody that wants them. And you can put them in any size you want. You know, they're, they're a little bit different on the way they're, they're built. Okay, now, if that breaks that, if you're an aggressive trader, if it breaks that line, I'd buy. See it? See resistance right there? I'd buy that. Now, since it's just a, still a red background, I'd probably bring my expectations to right in through here. And I, whoop, I went ahead and moved my stop accidentally. Oh, well. Everybody see what I did just then? Okay, let's see if we can get into another trade. This is getting close to the market open. Anybody remember the market open on gold, what we called? Anybody? I'll show you how we got it. Okay, let's just look at one chart for a minute so it's not too confusing. Does everybody see you have a thrust, a retrace, and a thrust so far? And we mentioned in the room this morning that, you know, that's actually no longer really heading down anymore, is it? So do you remember the, the figure that uh, Charles and I were calling out in the room this morning? When you break these resistance areas like this and look to the left to trade the right, I put a line just like that. And I would draw a box like so, okay? And I would be ready to take that trade. Okay, now if you missed the breakout, which we got just a second ago, but I accidentally moved my stop into it, so that doesn't help us. But if you miss a trade, you got to wait for the pullback. Okay, and we're going to look for a sweet spot on it. But we know where that sweet spot is, don't we? We know that it's either here or here. And let's watch it on a... Uh, Just for the fun of it, we'll watch it on the this one too. I'm not going to do it just yet because it's got to come near it, at least down to there. And just in case I miss this, I'm, since I've got two charts going, I'm going to go ahead and turn on PM trade. This is going to have to go red first, obviously, right? It may not go red. We'll find out. If it doesn't, I'm still going to take the trade if it comes in into this box at all. Because we called this live in the room this morning. Everybody should remember that. Well, if you weren't trading gold, you might not remember it. Let's speed it up a little bit. Everybody see a little bit more how you can trade a little bit more aggressively and also conservatively, though, on the charts? Uh, could you take the short from the predictor? Absolutely. Yeah, but remember why we didn't do that at the open this morning? Because we were starting, we had this already. See, these three power meters are already green. And this was pretty much telling us we had a trend change. See, there's your little trade right there. See that? Get a target out of the way, get the other target, and there you go. Uh, let's see, you've been forgetting to put those lines on to find better entries and still have had 85%. Good. Well, 85% success is plenty good. If you can do 85% success on trading, you know, and keep your losers, you know, uh, to where you don't lose a lot of uh, coin on your losers, you can add some pretty good coin to these. Now, this one here, we'll go ahead and do a bar close on what we call our larger bar. We'll see what it does. I've got it turned on, right? Now, remember on bar close, you don't have to have this um, stuff here. This is for regions and rays and things like that. Okay? Now, you want to see what... You remember when I said this morning that I turned on bar close? This is a good feature on this right here. 
or close long auto. Now auto is going to flash you and say, whoa, are you sure about that? You sure you want an auto trade on this? Because if, if you leave that on, every single bar close is going to fire two contracts until you get up to your max contracts. Okay, let's see if we get it. Bar close to the upside. We'll get in. And we can even do it on one, but we need to put our uh, target at like 10 if we do that. How often do you use the Ranko bar for entry or exit versus the four range? It depends. I, I like the Ranko to see the trend lines because you can really see, you know, some good trend lines on charts. But, you know, one of the things that you want to really do on trend lines is it's best if you get a few bars. That's the one thing we've seen on that over the years in trading this is that, you know, you want, you want a few bars. Uh, I would recommend probably five to six bars the same direction without losing one the other direction. Okay, well, if this closes, we'll see. Auto PM, it'll keep firing. Now, we're feeling a little bit of heat on our trade. It came down. See how it came down inside the box after all? Okay, we've only got one left, so... Could we go a PM trade also? Sure. Let's let's just do uh, PM long. We've got two on. We'd be adding. Let's just add two if that goes green. That should make it go green. If it, what it's got to do is it's got to quit going one direction and start going the other, like that. Everybody see that? That doesn't mean it's not going to still retrace, because it could, but our stop would probably be just right underneath there. Okay, now let's look at uh, our other one here. And see, we did get it. See there? Now watch how this, this bar close feature will work. And with hindsight, I know what this trade did because I actually, you know, we called this trade in the room this morning. So I want to show you how to, how to uh, trade this if you want to with auto bars. Watch how it'll add another one if that bar closes up. What if I wanted to add two? Sure. Every bar close that goes up, it will it will keep uh, firing another set of contracts. By the way, even with Ranko bars, you can see, you know, for instance, like support on this chart right here. I'm going to put exit on close on that. Uh, see where the, the swing is, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace. It just came right on top of that swing. It's kind of wicked it is all. You could draw lightning even on this chart. You'd see it. Well, I guess it's not going to draw in that small of one. That's too large a bars. So that's okay. It hadn't really had lightning. I, I, you can see it, but unfortunately, with these large bars, uh, lightning's not seeing it. If that closes up, it should add two. There you go. Could you just keep going on this? Sure you could. Just keep on trucking. Now, what, what do you think if this thing was to pull back where it would pull back to? Anyone? Let's, let's look at it just in case. It's breaking up, but you have a little thrust, and then you started going up right here. So I would say here on this larger chart, that is, and here. So between those two charts, uh, between those two bars, we should get a pullback, if it's going to pull back. Whoa, we got seven in now. That's that's a little little on the aggressive side, isn't it? Well let's see if it works. We could take off. Matter of fact, let's take off. Just in case we get bars down too many of them, we could take some of these contracts off. Like that. See they're down to six. Now we're down to five. 
and it came right to where I want it, so it should bounce there. Everybody see how I drew that? These are bigger bars, so you have to kind of look at these wicks and the bar when it changed directions. And there you're adding again. And of course you should add again and again and again if it keeps going up. That's the way that auto bar close will work. Like I say, it's a pretty cool feature. But you want to be careful with it because it can max your contracts. Whatever you have set on your max contracts on Object Trader, it can max those out. See, there's nine contracts. There's ten contracts. Okay? If this closes even down, would we want possibly out? Let's do six out if it even closes down, just in case. I'm going to get my stops out of the way. I don't care about them. And also, look at a trend line. See there, your trend line is still intact right now. But if it breaks that trend line with this new feature that we're going to add on Object Trader, could we actually reverse that? And the answer is actually yes. And all we would have to do is, is either draw a wedge, like so. And I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. We'll draw a wedge just in case. Ah, that's not a wedge. There we go. And we could even reverse if uh, this actually breaks that trend line. Because overall, this is still, you know, not, there's your top right there. See it, thrust, retrace, big thrust down. So they haven't taken that out yet. And they could easily hit their head there. I could see how they could easily hit their head there. We'll see. Still not hitting it yet, though, are they? We're long 11. We could actually flip to six short. There we just did. See, that broke our trend line. Now, I'd put a pr pretty tight stop on that, like that, and exit on close, just in case this uh, does nothing but just head back up. But keep in mind, like I said, on trend line breaks, they can be pretty phenomenal trades. Okay? Especially on these longer bars. You want to see if, uh, well, it looks like we're even going to get a target, aren't we? Let's look at a, one of these charts and see if we can get back in at like mid-band or something like that. Now, an aggressive trader, you would actually just buy like that, put your stop quickly like that. That's an aggressive trader. Uh, a less aggressive trader, see, that one got taken out. A less aggressive trader would be boxing in, for instance, like right here is lightning, right here. And if this goes deeper, of course, this could actually be a total trend change. We're still short on this one, aren't we? Let's see. No, we flattened because we hit our targets, so we're good to go. Okay? Everybody see how that could work for you? Not, not too bad of a way to do it, by the way. But if you have a long background like this, you know, this thing may go totally short. You know, we don't know yet, do we? But you notice that we got the meat of the trade already, didn't we? Let's see if we get a phantom. If we get a phantom, I'd probably do a bar close. And I'm not going to do six on a phantom. Let's see if we get a bar close on that. If we don't, we don't. Uh, yeah, I love the trend line trades. I wish there was a way, you know, for the thing to to know, you know, for instance, if I was to draw a trend line on this right now, to give you an example. Like so. And instead of doing a bar close, do a wedge. Long, uh, let's see, that's under, so it'll be this one. Long out, close above. Could we get us a little trade? Maybe. We'll see. 
That's a phantom trade. The only thing about big bars, though, is you really want to scalp because this is still a long trade, but it's looking like it's starting to break down to me, especially with it checking that swing right there that was a large swing. See the high, the low, the higher high? It checked it, and it even took it out a little bit. Let's look at our other chart and see what our four range looks like. Yeah, four range would have given you a nice little scalper already. See the phantom trade? Aggressive trader could have already gotten a scalp on that. Now, with larger bars, you're not going to see that as easily. See, see how that did right there? That's the thing about larger bars. Let's see if we can get a long trade on a trend line break. Well, this still looks like it wants to break down, doesn't it? Yep, there you went your red color. Uh, probably what you'd want to do now would be to draw your trend line like this. And if it breaks that trend line back to the upside, I'd probably snag it. You know, for instance, is it, uh, well, let's see. Let's just go ahead and buy it and see if we can get 10 ticks. I wanted it earlier than that, doggone it. I meant to hit it right there, not there. Kind of jumped. We'll see if it pays off. It might not. But if it does, it does. Not yet. Hey, we're pretty good on our P&L, so I think I'll leave the stop where it's at. It bounced off a predictor, didn't it? But it's sure not looking like it wants to head up. Let's see if it bounces off that predictor or not. That stopped us out. Why don't you just go for five ticks? You can, Mindy, if you want to do that. You want to try that? Like five. Buy it right there at predictor, for instance. That's an aggressive trader. See it right at predictor. And I'd put my stop like that just in case and with exit on close. Like just see if you can get five ticks. Because five ticks with two contracts is a $100 bill. Now look what we got now. Let me get this one out of the way. Everybody see the trade that's setting up on this chart? What did that do? It went from green to blue to yellow to magenta. So what are we looking for, everyone? Predictor trade. Yep, that's it. All right, let's see if we can get it. Okay, we lost a couple of trades. Not bad, though. Okay, let's see. Look to the left to trade the right, obviously, always, right? So we've got a swing right across here. We'll see if it holds. We don't know if it'll hold yet. We got our scalp, Mindy. Did you see that? Bounced right off predictor. There's predictor right there. It's telling us, and we've got a swing right across here. See the thrust, retrace thrust? So I'm going to draw two lines. And I'm going to say if it gets anywhere in this box right here, I'm going to fire it short. So let's do it with our little box. Our long trade worked out pretty nicely, didn't it? Now, when these backgrounds change like this and you do get a trend change, you can pretty much count on it being a trend change, by the way. You know, and if it turns out that it's not, all you got to do is get out of the trade. Just don't let it, you know, just go bite you and bite you. Okay, let's see if we can get this trade. All right, so we got short inside, short outside, touch plus two, and it did within two, so we're in it. We're in it with three, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off and see if I can get a couple of more if it happens to get up a little bit higher, like within two ticks of that top where I've drawn my box. There we go. Just got five. And it shouldn't take out that swing because that's your lightning identified swing. See your thrust, retrace thrust. 
that's your swing. And if it doesn't go with us, obviously, if this decides to take out the top of this thing, then we could actually go ahead and protect it a little bit more. Now, a conservative trader, let me show you how he, how he or she would trade. We already got this as aggressive. What would conservative do, everyone? See that green power meter? Since it's short, we'll go with some contra with uh, some targets. Power meter is green. If it turns red, conservative trader takes the trade. You could also look at a trend line trade, like so. And it's getting ready more than likely to fire it. See why we added these features to Object Trader, though, and why we want this PM, uh, pardon me, the predictor trade? Because to give you an example, I would probably, you know, as an aggressive trader, I would watch this thing touch mid-band, and I'd be hitting like that. You see what I mean? But you got to be careful doing that because it could go to the moon, too. So let's close that one. Let's just go with power meter, see what it does. Make a box or PM trade red. That's absolutely right. It's an awesome way to trade. And when you draw on your charts, you can tell when they're actually, you know, breaking down or, I mean, if you look at this right now, isn't this actually still retracing upward? You know, light there, lightning just drew to the top. But what will it take to take it down? A high, a low, a lower high, and a lower low, right? So in other words, one of these bars has got to actually close up for this to ever, or it's going to have to take out a swing to the left over here. But if a bar closes up, it should give us an opportunity to get short underneath that bar. When you use the term rollover, do you count one bar down as a rollover or two down? Well, Mindy, on your question, you really want to, um, most of the time, aggressively, you want to actually look at the, the bar up, the bar down, and when you break the third bar back, which is on that bar, that's an aggressive trade. See there where that bar's up, that bar's down. So, you're th you know, when this was doing this at the time, you know, you had a bar up, a bar down, and then this bar took out that little wick right there. That's an aggressive one, two, three. And you get in on that bar. Okay. Now, notice that that person, though, would already be in this trade, and the conservative trader has not taken this trade yet. Third one takes out first one's wick. Yes, that's that's an aggressive trade, though. Now, usually when I see this, where they barely touch the top and they push it, push the candle down, you can usually tell they're going to short it. But I'm going to go ahead and wait and do you a conservative trade. As soon as the meter turns red, should do it right under that. We'll see. Now, the one thing about a PM trade, it is a little breakout trade. There you go. Close below. Stop right at the swing. Exit on close. And ride a runner. And ride lightning uh, as your stop. Now, when did this change from going up to down? Anybody? Right there. Notice how that was high, low, higher high, higher low, barely higher high, but when it took out that swing, that PM meter changed red. So that's when it took the trade. That's, that's another good feature that I think you'll really like on your trading uh, pretty much. Did everybody see a little bit more how to do aggressive and conservative trading? They're really close to the same, except for the fact that if you're a little bit more of an aggressive trader, you're usually going to only put like one or two contracts on to kind of test the water. You know, and by doing that, you might get in and out of a few trades. Be careful being an aggressive trader at the open of the market because 
the open of the market, they football that thing around like a yo-yo. And you got to be careful. Okay? But this is exactly how we call the trades in the room every single day. John says this was a real eye-opener. Good deal. Uh, let's see. The trend line, the trend change mid-band. Yeah, this, this absolutely, Ed, on your question, I think this is one of the my favorite trades right here, and it's Charles's too, and that is these mid-band trades. You know, even if they're the, the different color, look how this thrust up and pulled right back into our little box that I drew. And we drew that box in real time, you know, on our trading charts, and we called this trade in the room. Uh, this little trade was called right there on that bounce off that uh, swing right there. Oh, the first 15 to 30 minutes, David, on your question, you know, um, the one thing that, that you might want to do on that part of it is if they're if they're kind of beating you up a little bit and you're losing some of the coin that we get in the first open of the room where we trade the oil and gold, I wouldn't even trade it for the first few minutes. Now, once we get this box to everyone and I get the features that I want on it also, do you realize that you could actually move the box? You know, to give an example, let, let's just draw a box and I'll show you. This won't fire any trades now, but let me put it on the chart. And I'll go ahead and let's say that you had this set to fire short right there. Well, what if you said one contract, but you know what? If it breaks support here, I'm going to fire another one. If it breaks support here, I'm going to fire another one. And you'll be able to move it in real time. See that swing right there? See that swing right there? You could just keep adding to it if you wanted to by just simply moving the box. You can't do that with the one you guys have got, guys and gals have got now, but you will be able to because this is the new region here. Uh, I just don't have the new PM predictor trade or the new predictor trade or the trend line trade that will draw automatically. I think once we get that, everyone, if you just watch your P's and Q's, I think we'll be able to all get some really good trades. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. And this will be available probably in the next uh, 20 minutes. Uh, Lee, they're going to come out at the same time. I'm just waiting on that programmer to finish so that we can get this thing going. Yeah. I, you know, Easter weekend came upon us, and do you think programmers work on Easter weekend? No, but Viper guys do. Well, one of the Viper guys does. <laughs> Never mind. I was here this week, and I helped several people. All right, everyone, have a good one. Hope Charles didn't uh, watch the end of the webinar. All right. Uh, he is a trader, too. Lee, on your question, he doesn't get time to trade as much as he would like to. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a good one. We'll trade in the morning, and we'll call the trades as usual. Bye, everyone. Thanks.